Well, welcome to session four, Bible Studies for Life, here in the spring of 2020. Today, as we continue through a, a kind of a study of salvation, really is kind of what we're looking at here, uh, we look at a, a Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith chapter, a great chapter. You ought to read the whole thing, certainly, to get a feel for all that is being said about what faith is and the faithful people that we know and those that we don't know. But here we look at the beginning of it in this passage that maybe is very familiar to many of us, who says, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. What is faith? How do you define it? Well, the writer of Hebrews gives us a great definition. It is the reality of what is hoped for. Hope. You know, hope's only as good as the object in which you put your hope, right? I mean, I've been hoping that the Cowboys would do better in the playoffs, but it just hadn't happened, right? We can hope for things, but they just don't happen because the object that we put our hope in is not sufficient. But when you put your hope in God, when you put your hope in Christ, you know that he will keep his hope promises. He is faithful. Hope in God is certain because he's trustworthy. That means he is worthy of our trust. He is faithful. We can trust him. We can know that he'll do what he said he was going to do, that he'll keep the promises that he's made. We can trust the Lord. We can have hope in him. That faith is the reality of what is hoped for. We we hear that he will do things. We know that he will. I believe that God will answer his promises, every single one of them, without fail, he will answer them. I have complete trust and faith in him doing that. And it is the proof of what is not seen. You know, the proof of what is not seen. And in fact, maybe the proof of what is never seen. We may never see it. That is true for many people. Many people have hoped we can look back in history and you see that people were waiting in the Messiah to come. And many were saying, uh, you know, that, that we'll wait, he'll come, he'll come, he'll come. And they never saw. Generation after generation, centuries of people looking forward to the coming Messiah did not see him until Christ comes, born in, in the manger, laid in the manger there in Bethlehem. Uh, so there were so many people whose hope, uh, their faith in God, their, their trust in him uh, was never seen by them. They never saw it until after they had passed away. Then they saw it reality. You know, we trust in God. We don't have to see it to know that God will do it. We trust that God will do it. So many had that, right? So many went through that, and we we understand that, right? But what we believe here is that God will answer everything. So we put our faith in him, the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. If I have to see it, if I have to touch it, it's not faith, right? It's not faith. Faith is reality of what is hoped for, the proof, the evidence of what is not seen. And then we have this example here of Abel and Cain, the contrast between Abel and Cain. And what happens here in this passage is the writer gives us insight into what really occurred back in Genesis when Cain killed Abel. It says, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. Catch this. The difference between the offering that, that Cain offered and the one that Abel offered was the faith of Abel. It wasn't the content of the gift. I think sometimes we, we think that when we read the story in Genesis, we think, well, because Abel gave a blood sacrifice and Cain just gave a grain sacrifice, then, then Abel's offering was more acceptable. He gave a better gift. But that's not it at all. It's a complete misreading of what occurred. And the writer of Hebrews gives us this insight to say, no, it was because Abel offered his in faith. There's nothing wrong. Whatever your offering is, your offering is, it is the faith that goes with it, the trust in God. And so by faith, it was approved. That was the difference. Cain wanted a transaction. He wanted to give something to God so that he may gain God's blessing, get God's favor. He wanted the transaction. Abel gave an offering. He gave an offering. You see, the offering is that thing that we give without any expectation of return. 
We don't expect God. We don't demand God give back. You know, God, Lord, I've been giving my tithes and offerings my whole life. Where's my comeback? Well, then what were you giving? It wasn't an offering. It, it, was, it was a payment. You thought you were paying for services that would be rendered at some point in time in the future. All right? If you have given your offerings with some expectation that there'll be a return on your investment, well, then it wasn't an offering. You were making an investment. You thought in your spiritual future. No. You gave an offering. An offering is given by faith. I just trust that God is in control. God's going to take care of me. I'm so thankful for that. I want to offer him the first tenth, the first gift out of what he has done for me. So I give him my offering. By faith, Abel offered to God. And his offering was a better sacrifice than Cain's because he gave by faith. That was the difference. Now, without faith, listen to this, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. It is the simplicity of faith. What does it say? The one who draws near must believe that God exists. <laughs> well, that's about as simple as it gets, isn't it? I mean, the first part of faith is just believing that God exists. It's not, it's not rocket science, you know. If I'm going to put my faith in God, I have to believe that he exists, that he's there, that, that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him, which means that he can be found. I believe that not only God exists, but I believe God wants to be found. In fact, I would say that God allows us to find him because if God didn't want to be found, he wouldn't be found, right? I mean, if you could find, if you were playing hide and seek with God and, and he could never go without you finding him, then he's not God, right? The only way you find him is that he wants you to find him. It's, this is Romans 10, 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You just call on the Lord. You call out to the Lord. He'll save you. God will hear. God wants you. If you're seeking him, it's because he wants you to seek him. He wants you to find him because he wants to be found. This is faith. The one who draws near to him believes that he exists and rewards those who seek him. That means that he wants to be found. God is found by those who seek him because they're seeking him only after he begins to draw them. He begins to reveal himself to them. So trust, if you're seeking God, if you're struggling with faith, it, it's, it's just, well, is God there? Yes. Okay. Well, if I believe God's there, then God's already come after me. Well, I just got to trust him. Just trust what he said. Trust his word. Put my faith in what he's done. Christ on the cross. I believe that if I call out to him, he will answer that he knows me. He knows my life and that following him is my ultimate act of trust. Doing what he has commanded, that's my ultimate act of trust. Faith is not hard. Faith is not difficult. It is the childlike faith. What is childlike faith? I don't understand everything. I don't know everything. I, I, don't, I don't understand the depth of what it means to give and sacrifice. All I know is that God is there and he's invited me to follow. I'm going to follow. It's childlike faith. Don't disqualify yourself because you think you know too much. Uh, that's the tr 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 trick of Satan, okay? You just follow God. You believe in him. You believe he exists. He's calling after you. You follow him. It's that simple. Put your faith in him. He'll take care of the rest. He is worthy of your trust. Worthy of your trust. Hey, I hope this helped as you uh, get ready to prepare to teach uh, this lesson this next week. I hope it's helped you. Thank you for watching. And God bless you as you do the work that God's called you to. We'll see you next time.